Hey guys, my name is Devin Sherry. I'm an aspiring level designer. I'm currently working at Extreme Tech, working on the network uh, game multiplayer using an Unreal Development Kit. I'll link that into the description below. And I'm also working on The Afflicted. It's another indie game uh, being developed in Unreal Development Kit. Uh, it's a third-person shooter. I'll also link that in the description below. And to today I'm going to show you a script that I made that basically helps uh, spawn enemy bots and checks how many are in the level uh, while you're playing. And if you kill them, it'll check if they're dead, and it'll show you uh, how many are dead, and if they're dead, you can have something happen. So this would work in a single player environment. So say you have a room, and you spawn enemies in that room, and then after they're all dead, you want the door to the room to open, or you want some other event to happen. This is what this Kismet script does. So let me go into Kismet really quick, show you a little bit what it looks like. It's relatively short. Uh, right here we have a player spawn and then enemy spawning and then we have something called a modify object list I'll get into that and then we attach all this to an event of, die of death and then it checks if the enemies are dead removes them from a list and then we check if that uh, list has zero people in it and if it does uh, we're gonna have something happen so the thing we're gonna have happen in this case is just we're gonna unhide this giant cube now this is just for simplicity reasons. You can have other things happen. You can have a door open. You can have a cutscene play. You can have a lot of things happen. But for the sake of keeping things simple, that's what happens when you kill all the enemies in the level. So let me jump in. Let me jump in there and we'll see what it does. As you can see, all the enemies died that were spawned in, and the large cube was hidden. That's what we wanted, just for simplicity reasons. So we know it's working. So let's open up a new level and let's make this from scratch. So I'm going to go to New, Create New Level. I'm going to choose Midday Lighting. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. <clears throat> so here's our blank scene. And the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to convert this large cube into a mm, interp actor by converting it to a mover. So I'm going to right click, uh, go down to convert, and then convert static mesh actor to mover. Now like in previous videos when you turn a static mesh actor into an interp actor, uh, it loses its collision. So let's have the object selected and press F4 to bring up its properties or you can just double click the object to bring it up. And we're going to get back its collision. So in the filter top, uh, on the top filter search bar, type in collision. And then down here under collision type, let's bring that back to block all instead of no collision. So now that's set up to toggle off and on its visibility. So that's pretty much it. Now the next thing we got to do with our scene is that we got to create path nodes that we will use to spawn in our enemies. So I'm going to right click, go down to add actor, and then go down to add path node. Now the path node is basically it has the symbol of an apple looking picture and what it does is it tells AI where, either to where to move or you can use it as a spawn point so you can tell a, a AI bot to sp spawn at this point. So we want three of them to spawn so I'm just going to rotate them so they're facing me and I'm going to create three of these because we want three bots. And I'm going to spawn them over here because this is our player start this is where we're going to be spawning in when we play. But I'm also going to rotate this so I'm facing them as well. There's a little arrow right here that indicates what direction you'll be facing when you spawn in. So we'll spawn in from there. And let me just quickly go up here and just build paths. They say some of them are necessary, but they're all necessary once we start spawning in uh, enemies. All right, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go change our game type to UT game. So to do that, go to view world properties and then down under game type we're actually going to do a UT team game uh, I'm going to do that because I want to have the bots on a different team than me so they don't shoot me and I mean so they shoot me they don't shoot one another so I'll be on a different team than they are and that means they'll shoot me and not one another unlike if it were just the default free-for-all where everyone just starts shooting one another. So this is basically our scene. It's pretty simple. So now we can jump into Kismet to start setting up some uh, uh, variables that we'll be using to reference in our scene. So I'm going to move our windows around just so I can see a little bit of everything. The first variable we're going to be creating is a object variable. 
So let's go to new variable and go down to object and then object. It's going to be blank because when we spawn in our enemies, we're going to spawn them into this blank variable. So we're going to give this variable a name. We're going to name it enemies. So go down to its uh, properties and find var name and make it enemies. So now we got that set up. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to create a new variable for an integer. New int. Now this integer is going to basically hold the amount of enemies in our object list when we create it. Uh, an object list basically holds a, a series of objects that can be either removed at, or each individual object in that object list can be accessed using different nodes. This variable is going to count how many enemies are in our object list. So when we have three enemies, this is going to be three. And then as we remove enemies from our object list as they die, this is going to get lower and lower as they die. So we're going to keep its int value at zero and we're going to give it a variable name of enemy list number. So enemy list number. Now the last uh, the last variable that we're going to create is a new one that I haven't touched on uh, through this uh, Kismet series of scripts. It's called uh, an object list variable, and this is the object list that we're going to use to hold all the enemies in, and it'll basically keep track of how many enemies we have, and then from there we can access those enemies in that object list. We can remove them. We can add more to it. So that's what we're going to use that for. And we're going to give it a, vari a variable name of enemy list. And that's it for our variables. So let's have them all selected. So I'm going to hit Control Alt and left click drag a marquee selection. Have select all of them and then press the C key to bring up a comment. And I'm going to name this comment variables. Okay. Now that we have our variables set up, we can start scripting. So the initial event that I want to use. Uh, is going to be a player spawn event. So I'm going to right click, go to new event, player, player spawned. So this is basically saying as soon as the player spawns, do something. Now in the case of, uh, just for this example, it made it, I made it a very simple initial event, but your initial event could be the start of a cutscene, it could be when a door closes, it could be anything you want. Just for simplicity reasons, I'm making it just as soon as the player spawns, I want to have enemies spawn as well. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the spawn point. As you can see, this variable connector, a spawn point. So with our, with our player spawn selected in our scene, select it and then right click on the variable connector and then new, do new object var using player start zero. So this basically says this is our spawn point, this is where we're spawning from. So now in uh, player spawn, we're going to change its max trigger count, we're going to change it to zero so we can spawn as many times as we want. If we die, we'll respawn and it'll spawn new enemies with us. So that sets up our initial event. So now what we want to have happen here is we want to start spawning our enemies in. So we're going to need an actor factory. So I'm going to right click, do new action, go up to actor and do actor factory. So basically an actor factory holds a bunch of different kinds of uh, factories that basically spawn in different kinds of actors that we want. So for this instance, we want to spawn AI bot actors. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to go into its properties, and under factory, we're going to hit this, uh, create a new object, and it's going to bring up a drop-down list of a lot of different kinds of uh, factories that we can spawn in with actors. But we're going to look for UT fact actor factory AI. We want to take in art artificial intelligence and spawn bots in. So now that we have that going, the next thing we're going to mess it with in its properties, we're going to force deathmatch AI so they automatically start killing, uh, killing themselves like each other, killing the enemy, and killing the player. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to force that uh, for controller class. We're going to do, we're going to leave it at none because I found if you do any other kind of controller class, the AIs don't work properly. I'm not sure what the reason behind that is. It's just the case I found that none works the best. Now for pawn class. We're going to do UT pawn. So this spawns the appropriate uh, pawn bot uh, model. So you get robots spawning in and start attacking one another and attacking you. Now we're going to give it the default inventory, which I believe is just a link gun. For team index, we're going to change them to team one. Uh, players are automatically team zero. So now when we do a UT team game, uh, I'll be on team zero, which is I think red and team index 1 for the other team represents team blue so now when I spawn in they'll start shooting me and then I can shoot 
And then last but not least down in spawn count, we're going to spawn three enemies. So just put in three. Now that we have that set up, the next thing we got to do is we got to set up the spawn points. Uh, so basically it's like which points in your level do you want these enemies to spawn in? And that's what these three path nodes are for. So select all three of them to select multiple objects. Hit control, left click on a new object just to keep grabbing them. So now with all of them selected, I'm going to right click on the spawn point variable connector and then do new object bearers using path node under zero and then all of them. So you'll have all three of them set up. So now we're saying, okay, when we spawn our bots, spawn them at these three locations. Okay, next we're going to do the spawned variable connector. And for that we're going to do a name variable and we're going to reference the blank object variable named enemies. So we're going to create a new named variable, so right click, go to new variable, and do new named variable. Now down in its properties, for expected type, we're going to make that an object, and then find var name, we want to name it the same as enemies, so name it enemies. And you'll get that check mark that lets you know, yes, I know what you're referencing. So I'll plug that into spawned. Now that we have that set up, let's plug in the out output of player spawned into the spawn actor input of actor factory. So basically now, if we play, as soon as we spawn, enemies should appear on the screen and start shooting one another and shooting the player. So let me jump in. You are on the way. All right, we see that it's working. They're all on the right team and they're attacking me and not one another. So let's back out. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to modify our object list. And this requires a node called modify object list. So let's get that. So let's right click, do new action, go down to object list, and let's go to modify object list. Now with modifying an object list, you're able to add new objects to, the li to a list, you're able to remove objects from a list, and you're allowed to just empty the list completely. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to plug in the finished output into the uh, add to list input of the modify object list. Now for our object reference, we're going to plug in the enemies named variable that we used in before. So plug that in. So basically this is saying this is the objects I want to reference for to add, to add into our object list variable. So now we're going to create a new name variable to represent our enemy list object variable, object list variable. So I'm going to right click, go to new variable, name variable, and then in its properties, go find object list for its expected type and then name it enemy list. And then if it gets a check mark, it knows what you're representing. So plug that into the object list var variable connector, and now we have that set up. So basically we're adding the enemies from this object to this object list as soon as they're spawned. Now the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create another named variable, but this time this one's going to represent the number of entries in our list. So go to new variable, name variable, and under expected type, find integer, and then the variable name is enemy list number. So type enemy list number under find var name. It recognizes it, so just plug that in. So now what this does, as soon as act, uh, enemies are spawned, those enemies in this object variable are then placed into this object list variable and then this number changes to three. So next, we're going to need to attach an event to the sequence. So we're going to need to go to new action, we're going to go to event, attach to event. And what an attach to event does is that it attaches certain uh, targets, the attachee, it attaches them to a certain event. So now they're going to be referenced when the event fires. So I'm going to plug in the out output of the modify object list into the in input of the attached to, to event. Now our attachee is going to be our enemies. So I'm going to just uh, select the, uh, the name variable for enemies, hit control C, control V to create a duplicate of it, and then I'm going to attach that to the attachee uh, variable connector. Now for our event, the event we were going to attach is the death event. So basically when an enemy dies, uh, we're going to fire off a new set of actions to represent uh, them dying. So 
right click, go to new event, go to pawn death. Now that we have our, that into the scene, we can plug the event variable connector to the death. So just drag that on and it connects. Now with the death uh, event selected, go to max trigger count, just set that to zero so it can fire infinitely. And now what we're going to do is we're going to set up the instigator and the instigator is going to be the enemies found in the object enemies. So control C, control V and plug that into instigator. So now once an enemy dies, we want to remove that enemy from our object list. So I'm going to drag out a new modify object list node. So new action, object list, modify object list. And we're going to set up the same object references, object list variable, and list entry count variables. So I'm just going to copy and paste those and put them in the appropriate spot. Okay, now that we have that set up, uh, when we get a death, we're going to do the out output of death into remove from list. So basically once one enemy dies, that enemy is then removed from our object list. And so if I had three enemies in the object list, this integer variable will be three. But once I kill one, that this number will go from three to two. It will increment downwards because I killed one enemy. And it will continue to do that as I kill my enemies. So when I reach when I have killed all three enemies, this number will be zero. And when that number is zero, we want another action to fire, which is going to be the toggling of the visibility of the large cube in our scene. So in order to tell if this number is at zero, we're going to have to compare that number with the number zero using a compares, compare integer uh, condition. So I'm going to right click, go to new condition, comparison, compare int. So I'm going to plug the out output of the new modify object list into the in input of the compare in condition. And I'm also going to create a new variable for the uh, B comparison of this compare int. So I'm going to go new variable, int, int. And we want to compare it to zero, so we're going to leave this at default. And then A, we're going to plug into the enemy list number. Now the final step is just to hide our large cube in our scene. So I'm going to need a toggle hidden actor uh, node. So I'm going to right click, do new action, down to toggle, toggle hidden. So now when A equals B, we want to hide this large cube in our scene. So select the large cube in our scene, then right click on target and just do new object variable using inter vector zero. So that's basically the conclusion of this sequence. Let's check if it works. And it's working. We hit the large cube after all three enemies are dead. So we know it's working. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you learned a little bit of something. Hopefully you can use this script in your single player levels uh, for your portfolio for a game industry uh, quality game or an indie game. So please check out my portfolio linked in the description. Please share this video. Please like, subscribe to my channel for more. And also comment in the comment section below with uh, suggestions for new videos, uh, suggestions for ways that I can improve the quality of these videos, or if you have questions uh, about what it is I've done here, if I haven't cut, if I missed something, or you're not too sure about something, you want extra explanation. And I also have a link in the uh, description below with a link to my portfolio, to the section of my portfolio with this tutorial in it, where you'll find a written version of this tutorial as well as the level file for this tutorial so you can download and try it out for yourself and see my work as it appears here. So thank you for listening and uh, I hope you enjoyed it.